Hi, my name is Charles here at JTEC, and we're going to go over how to do uh, an air brake, uh, air brake uh, system, the air system on this International. Um, but it's it's a six test portion, and we're just going to, we're going to do the first test right now. Uh, first things first, always remember safety. So we're going to be letting a lot of air out of the vehicle, drain it to zero. Uh, we're going to be filling the vehicle all the way up. So we want to make sure the vehicle is chalked. We want to make sure that uh, all of our safety, uh, all of our people know what's going on. Uh, make sure you're wearing your eye protection in case of an airline popping off or anything along those lines. So make sure you're wearing proper safety equipment. So the first thing we need to do, we're going to go by the numbers here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to drain the, the air out of these tanks. Now if you look at the tanks, if you come in here, we've all got a drain valve. So this is a segmented tank, so there's one on each side of this tank, and there's one on the other side of this one. So the first thing we need to do for this first test is to drain all the air from the tanks. And what that's going to do is when we turn the truck on, it's going to have a, the low, uh, the low pressure warning light is going to be on, and the audible sound is going to be on, and we're going to test to see when that, comes, when that goes off. And the pressure should build for about 60 PSI when it goes off, and then... It should build up and the governor should turn everything off around about 120 PSI. So we'll, we'll do this. We'll shoot by the numbers. So first thing, let's drain these tanks. The reason why this take may take longer or as long as a second take, as a primary take, even though it's segmented, is because of a check valve that's in there. It's a one-way check valve to not let air go back into the supply tank from the secondary tank, even though it's a segmented tank. Oh. So there may not be any air that comes out on our supply side, which is the other side of this tank. It sounds like it's empty. So we're going on the inside. That's the that's secondary tank. Then we're gonna go underneath the truck, truck and do the supply and the primary. As you can see, our supply tank is already empty. It's because it emptied into our secondary tank. So while you're down here and you're emptying out these tanks, uh, you want to look for any water or condensation that comes out of the tank, or especially out of the wet tank or supply tank. It should have water coming out of it because that's where all the wet is going to accumulate. Also look for debris, rust, that will tell us the, the, uh, the state of the tank on the inside. So. Now we're gonna go in, we're gonna start the vehicle and listen for some of the warnings and the audible sounds. Okay, so now we're in the truck and we're gonna look, we're gonna look at the gauges. And if you look, our tanks are reading zero. That means there's no air in our tanks. That's what we wanna do when we start up the truck. We wanna make sure everything's at zero. So let's start up the truck. You're gonna hear, you're gonna hear some loud noises. It's going through its checks. Here we go. So that beep, that's our audible sound for our air saying it's empty. So now we're going to build up the pressure up to 85 to 40 psi. Should take should be within 40 seconds at a high idle.
counts are 80 PSI. Now it should reach 100 PSI within 40 seconds. It's trucking along pretty good. Definitely within 40 seconds. Okay, the governor should cut off at around 125. 125 to 130. There's one. That's probably a secondary tank. Maybe it was both. It's kind of hard to read these gauges. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the pressure to see when the cover cuts in. Uh, the difference between the cut in and the cut out should be more than 30 PSI. So now we're sitting at 120, 121, maybe 123 on the secondary. What we're going to do, we're going to use some services. We're going to press the brake. We're going to, we're going to uh, just actuate some air. Get this thing to... Give me more, no more than 30 PSI. Yeah, there it goes, there it goes. Turn off. So it was about it was about 25 before it kicked in. We had to drop a lot more though. As you can see, we got our secondary tank, our needles raising again. Without at high idle, we hit at high idle, it'll go a lot faster. But so that is test one. That's test one finished. Test two, we're gonna check the uh, for stabilization. So we'll get this back up. We're gonna turn off the vehicle. We're gonna watch these gauges. Two minutes. You cannot let it drop. It should not drop more than four psi within that two minutes. Six if you've got a trailer attached. Six to eight. Or two trailers for eight. For eight. Six for one trailer. Wait for this camera to keep that there. All right. So I'm going to turn off the vehicle. I'm going to watch this drop. It should drop no more than four psi. So we're second at. Oh, it's at 123 maybe. So it shouldn't drop below 199. I'm that's tank one. It was like 125, so more, no more than 120 in, on the secondary tank. Here's our primary and there's our secondary. Two minutes, just watching it. So what this tests is the... Uh, how well the system chart, how well our supply tank is, and all of our fittings are going back to the supply tank. So we're checking right now. Uh, also, we're the the lines, the safety, the the service relays, all those pieces that charge the system is what we're really checking to making sure there's no major leaks.
So we're looking at about two minutes and we've dropped about two PSI on our primary tank and I would say we haven't dropped anything on our secondary tank. So test two, it passes. Next, we're going to move All on right, to we're test gonna three. We're going to do test three uh, of this Bendix test. So this, we're checking, this is called the cuff test. What we're going to do is we're going to, at full pressure, we're going to release the parking brake, which means we're going to push in the push-pull valve. Then we're going to push the brake, and then, so make sure the vehicle's shocked because we're releasing the parking brake. So it will roll if it's not correct. Make sure safety first. Then we're going to push the brake, and then turn the ignition on. We're going to listen to a... The, we're going to listen to the vehicle do its checks on the air valves. You hear a cuff, 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 cuff. You'll hear it a couple times. Uh, what this does, it checks the uh, it checks the valves on every single brake cylinder. So let's do this. So what we got pushing the air, parking brake is released. All right. I'm going to turn the ignition. Now turn the, I'm gonna turn it on. I'm not gonna turn the vehicle, I'm not gonna start the engine. So turn it on. You hear him? All right, so that was the test three and that is testing all the valves. Now we're gonna move on to test four. Test four is the same thing. Only this time we're gonna check it's just like test two, where we're going to push the uh, push the brake in and we're going to wait two minutes for release. But this time, uh, everything's going to be, uh, we're checking with the brake held. Before it was the pressure without anything held, now we're actually going to press the parking brake. It should be the same. So it should be no more than four PSI over two minutes with the brake held, the, the uh, service brake held. So. Come on in here. Look at the gauges again. All right, we're gonna press the brake in two minutes. that is two minutes now what this checks it, it, this checks for any leaking on the service brake line so it'd be loose lines uh, the trailer control valve we would check if there was any leaking we check the stoplight switch uh, the brake chamber diaphragms if there was any leaking this is what would be problems caused by these problems tractor protection valve service brake release uh, dual brake valves uh, the relay valves, uh, double check valves. So all of those pieces is what we're checking with that with that one test of holding that brake in for the service brake in for two minutes. So 
All right, so now we're going to move All on. Right, so we're five. moving on the test five. We brought the truck inside to do uh, to do some inspect to do some visual inspections once we're done with the whole test. Um, so test five, what we're checking and making sure the push pull valve works on this vehicle that it works properly, which means we push in the valve, it releases the brakes, so we can use the service brakes. When we pull out the valve, it it sets the parking brake. Now, since this is a disc brake truck, it's harder to actually check to make sure it's working because we don't have that, that visual push rod. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to move the truck with the park with the brake set. We shouldn't be able to move the truck at all. And if it does move, uh, and they're broken, obviously, and then we're gonna release the brakes and see if the truck moves just a couple inches. That shows that the brakes release properly. So to do this, we need to turn the vehicle on. So that's why I did all explain, it's gonna get loud. Test five. Now our last test, test six. Uh, this test actually tests the foot valve or the dual foot the valve on the uh, the pedal. So what we're going to do is we're going to drain the secondary tank that controls the service brakes on the steering wheel. So we're going to come out here and we're actually going to drain this secondary tank. So. Again, on this system, the front tank is our wet tank and our secondary tank. So we're going to drain our secondary tank. Alright, now we're going to go inside we're going to verify the secondary tank is empty. So, because of the one-way check valve, we've actually emptied our supply tank and our secondary tank. So, keep that in mind. Let's go inside. And we can see that the secondary tank is empty. Got a red light saying it's empty, it's empty. Let me turn these lights on so you can see it. There we go. So it is empty. So now we're gonna try, we're going to apply the brake and we're checking to make sure the valve moves the air from the second, from the primary tanks and applies it to the secondary system, which is the steering axle. Okay, so all the, all the air is out of that secondary tank. Uh, the only way I know how to test this is have somebody push the truck and I stop, make sure the vehicle can stop with just the air from the primary tank. So I'm going to have an assistant push the truck and I'm going to apply the brake. Go ahead and push the truck. We're moving. There and if you listen, they only release the air from the back axles. Uh, so it's actually pushing that air, all the air back. So it's actually moving forward and still releasing. So even though the secondary reservoir doesn't have air, it has pushed it to the, to the front. So now we're going to do the exact opposite. Fill the, fill the secondary reservoir and drain the primary and see if this will work again. So, can I turn the truck back up? Alright, now we're going to do the primary tank. The secondary tank is now full. We're going to drain the primary tank. Again, this is going to the primary tank and the wet tank. And the primary tank's bigger, so it's going to take longer. Keep in mind, if you don't have a cable connected to your valve, you'll have to get there with your hands. And if it's pulled out, 
You could freeze your hands, so make sure you wear gloves and you go down to the actual valve. Primary tank is empty, we're gonna go in and verify. It's becoming. We've got our warning light and our tank is empty. Our secondary tank is full. So we're gonna go out, we're gonna push the truck again. Just to test to make sure that this valve is good. Brakes are released. Push the truck. So again, you hear that huff, and we have no air in the primary tank, which controls the rear axle on this vehicle. So the air is going through the valve from the secondary tank and applying the brakes on the rear axle. So we know that that works. All right, we'll charge this back up. Um, that's it for the tests. But even if all your tests pass, Go through your air system, checking all your lines and all your fittings, making sure there's no kinks. Just because it passes doesn't mean that you don't have a kinked line or something cutting something off. It just means that, well, it'll work, but it doesn't mean it's not, that there's not actually a problem. So make sure you always go through and do a visual inspection of all your air lines. And we're going to do a, an initial adjustment on this slack adjuster. This is only done on the initial installation of the slack adjuster or a realigning of the brake pads or the drums or something like that long. This is a self-adjusting slack adjuster so it does not need adjustment during the uh, regular service life of the, of the adjuster. Right here. So what we're doing is we're going to take, uh, we're going to have this brake, touch the brake pad to the, uh, to the drum. So if this is, if you can see the gap in there, that is not a play. Apply the brake. If you look, the tire can still spin with the brake applied. Raise the brake. So that is obviously not an adjustment. So the way we do this is using the slack adjusters ratcheting adjustment uh, screw. So it's right here going to this is clockwise you turn it clockwise to adjust to adjust it and the way we're going to do this so it'll freely go all the way down until the brake shoe touches the drum and you can tell because it won't move anymore now we're going to back it off ratchet it a half a turn it's a quarter of a turn Another quarter, uh, not quite a quarter. There we go, it's about a half. All right, we can spin it. All right, so it's not touching. Apply the brake. All right, look at that. Release the brake. So now that is an alignment. Also one thing we want to, adjust, want to check for while we're down here is the travel length of the push rod. Now this is, this length is determined on the actual diameter of the can. This is a 20 inch diameter can. So our maximum throw is about an inch and three quarters. That's our maximum. Our minimum is around an inch. So we want between an inch and three quarters. So we'll check that. We're gonna take our tent measure and put it against the housing of the, uh, of the drum cylinder. And if you look, we're looking at about two and three quarters. Apply the brake. And it goes out to about four inches. Release the brake. So that's a little under an inch and a half. About an inch and a half. Somewhere in there. Also, one thing we want to look is when the, when, the, when the brake is applied, the slack adjuster should not exceed 90 degrees. Apply the brake. So this angle, angle right here, it's about 90 degrees. It does not, it should not exceed 90. So it should not be sitting like this. So this, uh, this slack, release the brake. 
The slack adjuster is in a proper adjustment uh, for initial or realign. Again, this is a self-adjusting slack adjuster. So during the service of this engine, uh, of the uh, of this brake, it does not need to be adjusted, it adjusts itself. Um, uh, another, thing, another thing to note is that since we're underneath here, you see all the grime up here, you need eye protection to do this because of all this grime which just will get in your face. So make sure you're wearing eye protection. And so this is a grease fitting right here. This should be greased about every 25,000 miles or so or prop, or whenever there's an initial, uh, initial uh, adjustment of this thing. So uh, I hope you learned something. <laughs>